our next uh, guest. So Lucy Gilbert, what a great uh, uh, role you have, innovation lead, working closely with uh, Professor Osman. Um, I guess we're now in, a, in an era of a much greater appetite for embracing innovation, not just in terms of technology, but new ways uh, of working. Um, so can you uh, explain to us, uh, Lucy, uh, this, uh, your experiences, particularly from uh, patient experiences, actually, of using this new innovation from Omron, Omron Complete, uh, and its role in the self-management of, of atrial fibrillation? Because I think this is really exciting uh, study that you've been involved with. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and I agree. I'm fortunate. I love my job as innovation lead and we work on a whole variety of different innovations. But yes, one of the current projects we're working on is around this evaluation of the on one complete device. So as Bar Barry touched upon, um, this is a fairly new device to market, which integrates a blood pressure monitor and single lead ECG. And it's used in conjunction with the on one connect app to support data monitoring, tracking and sharing. So I think we've spoken a lot this evening about early detection, early monitoring. We've spoken a lot about single lead ECGs being able to use as, as initial diagnosis of AF. Um, and this on one device allows for that early detection and that home monitoring. And it allows that 30 second measuring of the single lead ECG. So here at University Hospitals Coventry and Workshare, we have our innovation hub where we're set up to explore, evaluate and implement innovation. So we were approached by Onwon to work together with Professor Osman to do a usability and feasibility study into this new Onwon device with our patients and the quality of data that this device gathers. So our study has three arms. So the first arm of our study is very much around um, patients which are under the care of Professor Osmond's and colleagues um, Arrhythmia Clinic. So we are recruiting 20 patients who take this device home. They have it at home for around about two weeks and we ask them to use it once or twice a day. They then return it and they fill in a questionnaire and um, take part in some semi-structured interviews with myself and my team. And we're really looking at exploring um, some information around their previous use of any self-monitoring devices um, and the usability factors of ability of the device and um, how did they find um, the use of the app um, going forwards as well. Sorry, I just lost my internet connection for a second there. The second arm of the study is around those um, our patient and public partners who aren't under the care of a consultant. And I think this is where this study gets quite interesting because we're looking at this device in terms of self-management for somebody who may have suspected or diagnosed AS. But we're also looking at this device of the app with people who perhaps don't have a cardiac problem or potentially don't know that they have a cardiac problem. And as Barry was saying, there's quite a high proportion of people with undiagnosed subclinical AF as well. So with these, we get people into the um, innovation hub and we're recruiting around 20 patients to come into the hub and have a go at downloading the app and have a go um, with the device to then give our feedback again on very much the usability um, of this device. Then we're also exploring the clinical view as well. So once we finish recruiting to our study, we will be um, working with Professor Osman to find how he found the quality of data and what impact patients sharing that data with them could potentially have on their care going forwards. So we're about halfway through this study at the moment and I've got some preliminary results that I can share with you this evening. Um, so first up on user experience. So as you can see, people found the experience of using the device, connecting the device to the app fairly easy. Um, we did have some patients which found it a little bit more difficult, but these were perhaps those patients which were not quite so used to using digital technology and not quite so used um, to using digital apps. Um, we also looked at the experience of um, measuring their ECG and measuring their blood pressure. And probably not unexpectedly, people found it much easier to measure their, well, not much easier, but slightly easier to measure their blood pressure than they did their ECG. So I think everybody is very used to having blood pressure monitors. Um, it's very commonplace to have blood pressure monitors at home. But it's this ECG, the single lead ECG, um, the Alive Core technology, which is really new in this device. And people did find it easy to use. Um, 
um, but I think some people looking at the next slide, um, it was very unique for them to be interpreting this ECG. So whilst a lot of our participants really like being able to see their ECG and they get the live view of the ECG for the 30 seconds, um, it's interesting to see people are not quite sure how to interpret that. And I guess that links back to what Barry was saying around knowing your pulse and raising that awareness of AF. Um, but I think most importantly, the participants that we've recruited to date very much see the benefit of having a device which does this combined management of both single lead ECG and blood pressure. And the patients under the care of our cardiologists really see the value of having both of those measurements in terms of monitoring their condition at home themselves. So we've got a little bit of a poll to pop up then. So alongside this very much quantitative data that we collected, we've done some in-depth um, interviews with our participants to understand um, and drill down further into their experiences and the benefits they found. So I think we've got a little poll um, just to ask the audience what you think the benefit would be to your patients of having this device um, that they have at home with them to self-monitor. So guys, if you can just look below your video player again for the options um, and uh, just in the interest of time, if you can just give your responses as, as quickly as possible. We're, sl we're going to overrun very slightly on this webinar, but it's been such a rich discussion. Yes. So we've got a little bit of divide in there in responses. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting as well, and what we found in our data is that, that again, this differences between our, our clinical population and perhaps the non-clinical popula population, um, and whether you are using the device to monitor a condition or potential early detection of a condition. Fab. What were Lucy, you, what... Lucy, give an overview, give an overview of the poll results, and then uh, some discussion on on that. Fantastic. So I think the majority of people there, it's around that reassurance and this device providing the reassurance um, to the patient population. And that's exactly what we found in our study to date as well. Um, so if we move back over to the slides, um, you can see that we're, our user feedback is falling into three categories. So the first thing that we're picking up in our feedback is that patients really like the convenience of the device. So they really like the ability to do that single lead ECG from the comfort of their home and they're finding the device very easy to do to allow them to do that. Um, the second theme is around patient empowerment and I think patient empowerment is always a really key thing um, in healthcare but patients are really liking the ability of the device to allow them to screen and um, they like the ability to share results with their clinician as well and we've already had some participants within our study that have taken that opportunity to get their heart tracings and to share those um, with Professor Osmond again to get some additional reassurance from their doctor. Um, participants also um, like the device to allow them to um, manage their condition. So they, again, they like that visual real-time output. Um, and almost all of our participants have said that they would recommend um, the product to other patients to monitor the condition. And you can see on the right-hand side there, just a few key quotes from some of our participants, um, which are very much focused around giving you peace of mind, um, giving some assurance when their heart rhythm and their heart rate was normal um, and liking the ability to save, download and share the data. Um, so drilling down a little bit further into self-management then. Um, so I think this is really key when we're thinking in the NHS very much around remote monitoring, around keeping people out of hospital. Um, and our participants who are under the care of a, a cardiologist are all agreeing that they they believe the use of this device would allow them to go longer between participants um, and allow them to feel happier just having remote consultations with their clinicians rather than face-to-face -face appointments. So we've got a couple of patient stories um, from our study so far from these uh, patients that have had the device for a couple of weeks. Um, so first up, we've got a 74-year-old woman um, who's had suspected AF and been under the care um, of our cardiologist um, for quite a while now. Um, however, she's her episodes of AF haven't yet been captured. Um, and 
she'll be the first to admit that her quality of life is impacted at the moment because she's frequently attending GP appointments, she's frequently attending hospital appointments to try and capture that AF um, in order to get the treatment that she'd need. Um, she took the device home, very keen to use it, and she was able to have that device at home. And when she did start to feel unwell, she was able to quickly pop on that device and see what was going on with her heart rhythm. Um, our second patient story, we had a 60-year-old gentleman um, who's been diagnosed with AF, um, very, very good understanding of his condition, um, which is currently stable. Um, and the device allowed him just to monitor um, his condition at home and to pick up on any detect, um, deterioration early on. Um, and he was very much, again, reassured by having this data. He was well educated about his condition, but the device just gave him that extra level of reassurance that he wasn't in an AF, he was still stable, and there was no need for him to get in touch with his consultant. So we've currently done one focus group with some of our patient and public partners recruited from our PPI groups across the hospital. Um, and as I said, these are part of, um, members of the public which aren't under the care um, of a consultant. And it's interesting to see the comparison between the two. So these are kind of the target population that could potentially be using the on-one -on device because they've perhaps heard about AF and they just want to make sure that everything's OK. And, and they're that part of that 7% um, walking around with asymptomatic. AF. Again, the themes that we're getting back from the device are very, very similar. Um, they find it very convenient um, device and they like the design and the portability of it. But as I say, these results are hot off the press and, and there'll be more to come. But yes, I think this links in well with the discussions we've been having this evening around that earlier detection and around well, thank you very much, uh, Lucy. You're, you're sort of slightly breaking up, but I, I think you've come to the end of your presentation. What an exciting uh, innovation. What, a, what an era we're living in where we have these sort of technologies uh, available for us. I think it's worth noting that the uh, Alive Core, the single lead ECG component uh, that is actually integrated in this device, has actually now been nice approved. I think it's, I believe it's the first single lead ECG. Uh, technology that has actually got a nice approval for the detection uh, of atrial fibrillation. 